Sadly, I work with so many people who know that their partner has cheated. They've got the evidence, they present it to their partner, and their partner still refuses that the affair happens. They will not acknowledge it. And what do you do in that situation? I've had men and women really feel so stressed, so angry, to the point where they're nearly pulling their own hair out because they're just wanting to move the relationship forward, wanting to save the relationship, wanting to connect with their partner. And yet, in order for them to do that, they need their partner to admit what they've done. They need their partner to share and to explain and to express. And they feel stuck because they can't move forward unless they have that truth sharing discussion with their spouse. But their spouse is saying, no, it didn't happen. They delete the messages, even though sometimes the women or men I work with, they have video evidence, they have screenshots of the messages, they have emails, they have all this kind of evidence. But their partner just says, no. Now, there are various different reasons why someone may stay in that denial state. And it, it's important to understand this if you want to move forward. In certain parts of the world, it can be illegal, punishable by imprisonment or financial implications if they admit that they've cheated. So sometimes it can be a fear of what the consequences might be in the wider society and through the legal system or the court system or the criminal system, especially where I am right now in the Middle East. So that can be sometimes one barrier. Another barrier could be, well, if they admit it, then you might share it with friends and family, and then they lose their image, their ego will be shattered. Then there may be other repercussions. Then maybe you can blame them on a divorce paper. So some people are very careful about it because they care about their reputation. And if they feel that if they hide it or they don't admit it, then they're not going to be shamed, they're not going to be blamed, and it's more a way of saving face. And then, as I mentioned, the divorce. Sometimes people will use it to cite a reason for the divorce as adultery, and some people want to avoid that being in the legal system. Other reasons that people deny it and pretend it hasn't happened is for their own emotional well-being. Sometimes they feel like I can't acknowledge it because then I'll have to acknowledge that I have an addiction. And that could be a sex addiction, an alcohol addiction, uh, whatever addiction. And they, again, they try to deny it to protect themselves. Sometimes they deny it to protect their partner. They feel, well, if I start opening and I start sharing, it could destroy my partner. They already have low self-esteem perhaps, or they already are suffering so much, I can't do it to them. And then there's another reason that often sometimes people will not admit it, and that's because they just feel so bad and so guilty and so shameful and so disgusted with their behavior that they just want to pretend it didn't happen. And they just want to live in denial and they're often used to doing that with other areas of their life. They just completely blank it out. They shut down. There's different types of defensiveness in relationships. And one type of defensiveness is shutting down, where you just block the subject, block the person, can't deal with it. And sometimes they do that because they can't emotionally deal with the pain, with the emotions. They haven't got that maturity and that strength to face what they've done. So these are all the different reasons why even though you're providing evidence to your partner saying, please just let's talk it through. Please just acknowledge this evidence. Please tell me what's happened and they refuse, but they want to move on with the marriage. And that can leave you feeling stuck. Well, can I move on? Some people can and I help them and some people can't. They feel like if we can't start our new foundation on truth, on transparency, on honesty and openness, I can't be with you. I need that to be able to move forward. I need a confession. I need to understand. I can't just carry on as if nothing's happened when my 
head and my heart is full of questions. So it's important to honour yourself. It's important to know what you can accept and what you can't accept, what your boundaries are. Personally, I wouldn't be able to start over in a relationship without having all the information. Many people feel like that. Some people can because that's the only choice they have and they want to keep their family unit together. So only you can make that decision. If you'd like to talk it through with me, if you'd like to get my tips on how to communicate with your partner, to hopefully bring about that change, if you want to learn the tips to rebuilding the connection, creating trust, starting over in your relationship, or you want to create a new life for yourself, then do reach out to me. You can visit my website, nicolabeer.com, find more information there. You can email me, nb at nicolabeer.com, and you can join my Relationship Transformation Facebook group where everybody shares questions and everybody supports one another. It's a really loving community, and I'd love you to join it if you feel that that would be good for you. From my heart to yours, thanks for watching.